Good morning, dear brothers and sisters, dear friends. Today is uh, November 6, year 2016. This is my uh, first PowerPoint talk in Blue Cliff. <laughs> so um, I'm excited and also nervous at the same time. So we'll see what happens. Um, how many of us uh, new to the practice of mindfulness, or if you're here for the first time today, you can raise your hand. Okay, wonderful. So uh, I always feel new and fresh every time I talk about practice of mindfulness. Um, so, I have a question for you. Why do you practice mindfulness? Or why, you, why are you curious to come here to practice mindfulness? Anyone? You can just speak out too. Relieve stress. Relieve stress, yes. Enjoy the moment of living. Enjoy the moment of living. Quiet the mind. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So, for those who are practicing, who have practicing mindfulness longer, why do you do you want to achieve some goals in meditation? How many of you do? You can raise your hand. Okay. I mean, you do not. <laughs> What's the question from the teen teenager to Thai about whether he uh, he have attained the highest awakening yet? And Thai say, uh, no, and I do not need to. <laughs> So, what are the benefits that we want to, to receive from meditation? And there are those friends who already share about that. Um, of course, we come to the practice, we come to the monastery, or we join the mindfulness community for a reason. We don't just come just to come, right? So. And uh, the reason why all of us are here, including my students. Um, and if we do not know the answer yet, then it might not give us a clear idea why we want to do this. Even for our aspirants who uh, like to become nuns, in the future we have two aspirants here at the Sister Hamlet. And of course, you, you also want to achieve something. That's why you want to become a nun. So today, I'm going to talk about the four fruits of meditation. We know that um, the, f the four fruits of meditation are the originally the four jhanas or the four um, meditative steps or attainment that one should get when uh, when one meditates. So these are the practices that have been done even the even before the Buddha time by the yogis. And uh, the Buddha have make it adaptable to his time, and now uh, our teacher have made it adaptable to our time. So it's called the Four Fruits of Plumilish Mindfulness Practice. And to talk about the practice of 
the Buddha's teachings. The Buddha say that my practice, you should come, taste, and see. And I think Christ have probably said the same thing. You have to come and see it for yourself. You don't just blindly follow whoever is, you know, guiding you. Um, so you have to come and taste the fruit of the practice. So the four fruits of meditation that I will share about, it has a strong foundation of the Buddha's teaching. And so if we practice correctly, then we can see the effects and the benefits right in the present moment. So that's why Thay say, you know, he don't really have to attain anything. It means that he already received that. So the four fruits of uh, permanent mindfulness practice, it has a base of smriti, samadhi, and prajna. It means that uh, mindfulness, concentration, and insight. And the four fruits, the first one is, I have arrived, I'm home. Um, this is one of the basic fruits. So even if you just come today for the first time, if you have come back to your mindfulness, if you have come back to your mindful breathing and you feel grounded, you feel at home with uh, every breath you make or every step you take, then you already can achieve arrived at home. And the second fruit is about dwelling happily, or sometimes we call it dwelling peacefully. Um, this is one of the basic teachings of the Buddha. The Buddha taught the monks the sutra on um, knowing the better way to live alone. And in this sutra, the Buddha share about how to live happily in the present moment. So this is the next fruit. So if you've been sitting here for a while and you feel at ease and content with yourself, you can already achieve this fruit. And the next fruit is interbeing, is to be able to uh, connect and to see our relationship to other minerals, animals, to the world. Um, if we feel like we are a separate body and we are a separate self, uh, we cannot connect then that can bring us to the state of isolation and it can cause sickness. So to feel connected is very important. And the next fruit is uh, no birth, no death. And this is, this is maybe a more challenging fruit to attain. Um, but if we practice well, we can be able to see that everything is just a manifestation and there's no creation. So when there is enough causes and conditions, we'll go for the So the first fruit is, uh, I have arrived, I'm home. And we have a picture of Thai walking very peacefully with every step he makes and arriving at every moment. Um, so the first thing we can do when we practice mindfulness is to be able to stop and to dwell in the present moment. And that way we can be in touch with what's happening inside of us and around us in the present moment. And then with that, we can come back to ourselves and recognize our five skandhas. How many know what skandhas are? I'm sure all You know?
Yes. Yes, so the skandhas in Sanskrit, it means that um, the five elements, the five things that made up ourselves. So the body, the feelings, perceptions, the mental formation, and our consciousness. So um, when we can come back and to recognize our five uh, components, then we can feel then we can acknowledge we can acknowledge what is happening. Um, and when we practice to achieve uh, I have arrived, I'm home, we also um, can use the mindfulness breathing to calm and to embrace our body and mind. So whatever we have, um, in terms of feelings, perceptions, mental formations, we can just come back and to embrace them as they are. We don't try to fix it, even if you have a problem, <laughs> even if you have difficulties. We're not trying to fix it. In my meditation, when I have a difficulty, I just come back to be there alongside with my suffering so that whatever suffering or feelings I have, it, it can be embraced. Um, and you don't have to do much. It's like a mother trying to uh, cradle, trying to lullaby her, her baby. So she just do that, and then slowly the baby would just feel at ease and comfortable, and then it will stop whatever. If it's crying, then it can... Um, find more ease and stop crying. So the same with our feelings and our perception or our mental formations. If we have some difficulties, we just need to use our mindful breathing to come back and to embrace that in the present moment. And in that way we can uh, heal and we can make peace with ourselves. So, um, it sounds very simple, but you can do it. It's not something you have to think too much about. It's really something you can try in the present moment. So the second fruit is about dwelling happily. And there's a reason why I have a frog there. <laughs> so, dwelling happily means that um, we can be at ease and happy in the present moment. And in the Sanskrit word is uh, drishta dharma sukha viharin. Um, some people ask, is that easy? practice mindfulness because I think that I'm supposed to smile all the time. Because you come to a monastery, you come to a practice center of mindfulness and you see that everyone seems to smile. And um, you will wonder why. And when we say dwelling happily in the present moment, you might ask the question, how can I dwell happily in the present moment if I have all these stress or difficulties or suffering? So, um, the Buddha say, actually, when we can come back to the present moment, then we can accept whatever is there, and we can make peace. That's already dwelling happily in the present moment. It doesn't mean that we have to be happy right away, but you, you are at peace, you are at ease where you are. And happiness is the way. That's taste quote. Um, if you think deeply, or you can think back to the moment when you were younger, maybe you have the idea of happiness in the future. Um, maybe when you were still in high school or college, you have a dream that if I can become this person or or that person, then I can be happy. 
And now you can be in the present moment and to see whether if you have achieved that and if you are happy at this moment. Um, how many of us become who we want to be? We brave to <laughs> okay. I think myself included. Um, I, I wanted to become an elementary school teacher and I finished that and I was about to do my credential year and then I realized, no, I'm not going to be happy <laughs> even at this moment uh, while I'm studying and I finished all my studies because I realized that in my heart I'm not happy. Um, I still want to look for something else. I still want to find a spiritual path. So that's why I become a nun, because I feel like even I have achieved what I want to be, but I was not happy. But when I become a nun and I know it's nourished me more, then I know that can bring me happiness. So um, sometimes happiness is just right in the moment. We don't have to look for So this is also about the practice of froglessness. So maybe you're not familiar with the term froglessness. Um, they say that if you put a live frog on a plate, what happens? It jumps off, right? The moment you put it back, it will jump somewhere else. So sometimes our mind is like that. We, we have something already. Let's say we have the Sangha and we have the practice and we have a place to practice that, but we're not happy. Jump somewhere else, jump to another place, or uh, I'd rather do something else. So that is, that's being frogness. So froglessness means that we try not to be like that. We try to be more grounded. We try to be more uh, dwelling in the present moment. So um, when we can practice the froglessness, then we can feel more at ease and we can feel more at home wherever we are. So. I don't know if you can see it, but this is um, I have wrote and he have uh, written it in calligraphy and he, he offered, he, he gave to me as a gift before I came to the centers in America. So before uh, 1997, we have not had any practice centers in the um, United States, the monasteries. So, in 1999, when we first bought the Deer Park Monastery, and um, I was asked to go and help to establish the new center, they gave me this poem so that I can practice while I'm away. <laughs> and it has helped me a lot during the time that I'm far away from Plum Village in France. And it helped me to nourish my own happiness and my own practice. But other happiness is greater than the happiness today. I don't have to search for it because it's already here. If I can recognize it, then it will appear. If I only dream of it, then it will fly away. So, um, I think this poem has a lot of meaning. It's the same as um, dwelling happily in the present moment. So, um, if we can recognize the conditions of happiness that we are having in the present moment, then we don't have to search for it um, because it's already here. It might be contradicting 
to, to your belief that we have to search for it elsewhere, right? <laughs> I'm still not happy. I have to do something. I have to have that. Search inside yourself the beauty, the treasures that are inside yourself. So if you can touch that, then you don't really have to look far. I think each time we exit, we can also enjoy our breathing in and out. So the third fruit Oops. The third fruit is about interbeing. As I shared before, interbeing or non-self is the connection between ourselves and everything else in the cosmos. Things are inside each other. So scientists have discovered that this is true that things are connected and they are inside each other, they are interrelated. You cannot take one away from the other. There's no separate self. And also, it's about the four elements inside of us. Um, who knows what the four elements are? Yes. Yeah. So um, you know that we are composed of at least seventy percent something of water, and uh, we. Have the the consciousness in space. But just talk about the four elements. We know that the four elements inside of us are pretty much connected to the four elements that are outside of us. For instance, we need the air from the trees to breathe, right? And in exchange, we get back the carbon dioxide to the trees to breathe. So we kind of exchange in a way and we need the water outside of us, we need the fire, the warmth outside of us. And so we know that the relationship between us and the things outside, then we can help to protect what is outside of us. Um, you know that recently in June of this year, in Vietnam, the, the ocean was polluted and it was done by the irresponsible act of a um, steel company um, from Taiwan. And they have dumped like toxic waste, you know, they, they give money to the, dispose, um, the, to the waste uh, disposal site that's supposed to just handle the industrial waste, industri um, the, what do you call, the household waste but they give them all this industrial waste, so they don't know what to do, they just dump into the water. So in re as a result, it kills a lot. All of a sudden, the fishermen saw like tons of big fish and little fishes. They are washed off the shore, and uh, they test the water, and they find out it was toxic from the chemical. So, you know, Sometimes if we don't protect the outside element, then it can damage the inside. And we know that this, for the future generation, we don't know what happened. But um, so when we practice into being, we see that what we do or what we think or what we say, it can affect not only ourselves, but the people around us and all over the world. So sometimes, just because money, some companies can cause a lot of um, people and the beings. So, 
So the fourth fruit is the the no birth, no death. And uh, in the Buddha's teaching, the Buddha taught about the three Dharma seals as impermanence, as non-self, and nirvana. Um, so if we look deeply into these three Dharma seals, we can see that they are connected to each other. So the no birth, no death, is in the impermanence, neither nirvana nature. Nirvana means um, extinctions of all notions. Um, so, if we can practice and to see the impermanent nature of things, then we can also touch no birth, no death. Um, it's very easy to see the changing seasons in the East Coast. And you can see the impermanent nature of season. But if you're in Asia, it's very hard to see, especially like um, countries like Vietnam or Thailand or uh, Laos. When I was in Thailand just um, about two weeks ago, I was there for six months. I'm waiting and waiting to see the leaf turning, but it never turns. (laughs) And all I see for six months is green. I was waiting like to see the autumn in the East Coast. So when I came back, it was just a miracle to see the colors. So um, there's a beauty about impermanent impermanence. Um, so the same thing with no birth, no death. We know that. If things are not changing and stay the way it is, then imagine what kind of life we will have, right? First of all, there will be too many people <laughs> in this world, and we don't have enough resources for everyone, and the child will never grow up. Just stay the same like that. You never grow up and be an adult. And about the fourth fruit is um, to see the no beginning, no ending, just manifestation. Um, so we know at the point of our birth is actually just a continuation. We are just continuing our parents. Um, and when we die, we get continued in our descendants in our younger brothers and sisters. So actually, that's just the manifestation. It is, cause, it is um, due to causes and conditions. So because there's enough causes and conditions that we become who we are. And where there's, enough, there's not enough causes and conditions, then we cease to be. And when things happen, it's like this, because that is like that. Um, I will share with you later some of the things that are happening in the world. But for us to see that there's a correlation, there's a cause, and a condition. And the last thing I want to share about this fruit is... Um, Scientists have proven that we are from the stars and we will come back to the stars. How many of you believe that? I see very few. (laughs) Um, So now they have tested the um, collapsing stars and they trace all the elements that are in the stars and they see the same elements The Earth probably have been formed because many stars were collapsing and they just somehow, you know, bombarded and onto the Earth and things were, things were manifesting. So um, we know somehow we have those elements, right? 
because if you eat the vegetables, they are grow from the earth. And what is earth made of? Anyone in the physics major or scientist major related? Yeah. Yeah, you know that the earth makes up elements that are from outer planets too, right? They're not only from the earth. We have to be prepared. Because if we come from the stars, then one day we will go back to the stars. Um, maybe one day, you know, we will become another star. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so when we can see that, we can take birth and death maybe at a lighter um, perspective. I think the reason why people are struggle to live and struggle to um, compete and to try to get resources from other countries and um, exploiting a lot of resources is because they, they want to, to stay alive. Right? But we know that we are only here for a short period of time. And then we. So if we think of that, then we don't have to take everything for ourselves. We know that this earth belongs to everyone else. So when we um, cultivate the four fruits, we can use the basic practice um, to return home and to recognize and to take care of our body and mind. And that's the first fruit, arrive home. And then we can touch and nourish ourselves with the refreshing and healing elements in the present moment. We can also connect ourselves to others like people, animals, plants, and minerals. And then to see the no birth, no death, and the impermanent nature in ourselves and in all things. Sometimes, because uh, now it's about Thanksgiving, so somehow I think of the fruits of practice. Um, we have cultivated the fruit. The fruits, now we will um, harvest the fruits. We were able to practice to attain these fruits, then we will no longer be afraid and or run away from the past or be anxious about the future. Um, for instance, if we can feel arrived home, or if we can dwell happily in the present moment, then we don't have to continue to run away from our past or to be fearful about the future um, because we are grounded in the present moment. But it doesn't mean that we don't have to worry about the future because we do need to worry about the future at, the, at this DNA when everything's happening right now. But how do we plan for the future without being careful? And uh, we, when we can attain the fruits, we can also open our hearts and uh, offer our compassion and understanding to ourselves and to our loved ones and to the world. So, you know, the practice always starts with ourselves. And uh, if we are not truly happy, if we are not truly peaceful, then there's no way for us to help anybody um, or help the world. So talking, talking about opening the hearts,
Where are the where are Violence, right? Property and homelessness. Lack of education. I was surprised to, um, when I look online and to see what are the problems that the children and the um, young people are facing today, they actually say that now even children in the U.S., they, they don't like to go to school. And, um, and some are dropping out. The rate of dropping out of school is much higher now. And people are trying to find ways for the children to feel more encouraged to go to school. And I just read recently a newspaper from Ellenville about how to encourage your kids to go to school. <laughs> so even in um, well-to-do country like America, we can also have this same problem. Why are the children refusing to go to school? Um, maybe the system of education is too hard on them. Maybe they don't have enough time to play, so they'd rather stay home and play. Um, when I was visiting my sister in California, and I have a seven-year-old niece, the day that um, she doesn't have to go to daycare, she was so happy because she got to play with, with her mom and with me. So when I can come up, her mom just took her off from daycare and sh so she can be at home. And she was just overjoyed. <laughs> I think she didn't have enough time to spend at home. So most of her time is in the daycare or at elementary school. So she just come back like dinner time. You know, imagine that in your days, you don't have to come back that late home, right? So I think these problems are something that every one of us can be aware of and we can try to help the system of education. Um, and violence, we know that it's happening everywhere over the world. And um, terrorism and domestic violence um, arms, they're all over the place and we hope we can do something about that. So hopefully the next election will help. <laughs> Drug and alcohol abuse is also another concern. Natural disasters. Earth depletion and diseases. And we know that all these things that are happening in the world today, they are relating to one another. Um, but the roots is all come from oneself, right? The roots come from, uh, from hatred. When people cannot handle their emotions, their anger, then that can become violence. Um, and when people are ignorant about what's happening in to the earth. They, they can do many things just for their own benefit, but then it can cause a lot of harm. So we know that if we can fix one thing, or if we can take care of some of these problems, they can take care of all the problems. So I just want to show to you some of the things that we can be aware of. that's happening this year, disasters. I'm just going to talk about now. I don't know if many of you are aware of this.
You know, recently the, there's the Hurricane Matthew that hits Haiti, right? And it caused a lot of destructions, kills about almost 900 people, and displaced about 15,000 people, and it caused a lot of cholera out outbreaks. Um, And this is typhoons. You know, recently there were typhoons in July up to now. Um, but in July, it hits Vietnam, Hanoi, and also about their homes. And about 500 trees were uprooted. And there were the other typhoons in the Philippines. Um, it's Kasarika and Han. Haima, um, about 100,000 have to be evacuated. So you know right now many people don't have a home. And we're lucky to have a shelter, we're lucky to have a home. And recently also from October to November now, they're flooding everywhere in central Vietnam. Ha Tin, Quan Tri, and Quang Binh. And many homes were destroyed, and millions of people have to be evacuated. And thousands of crops and rice fields were just devastated. And of course, that will occur. So, just to be aware of some of the small things that are happening, but we know there are many other things that are happening in the world today. Um, but when we look deeply, when I saw these things on the news, I looked deeply to see why it was happening. And sometimes it's very um, heartbreaking to know that not only from natural disaster, but human beings contribute to these disasters. Um, for instance, the flooding in Vietnam. They know that the flood is coming, the heavy rain were coming, and um, the um, what do you call it? Hydroelectric power plant in Vietnam. <coughs> they um, they released the dam of water without any warning, without any kind of alarm to the people and they do it at night. <laughs> so, you know, people were not aware, people were not prepared, and just a lot of devastation. And when the district blamed these power plants for their um, irresponsibilities, they say, no, we already submit the warning, but you didn't let the people know. So the two sides keep you know, debating like that. So, you know that if people are not responsible for what they do, it can affect so many people. So the question is, how can we help? <laughs> so we have talked about the four fruits of practice and how to practice uh, mindfulness. Mm. So how can we help? The Vietnam War and see all the destruction there. He wrote this poem. I don't have the whole poem here, but uh, in Vietnamese it's called Butterflies Over the Mustard Fields. And the last sentence he wrote is, um, I am here, how can I help? 
So he returned after the war and to see all the destructions. Or we have, we are here right now and we witness all those disasters and destructions. How can we help? So, they and the Buddha share that we need to take care of oneself. We need to be fresh. We need to be clear-minded. And free here means that we are free of discrimination. We are free of notions. Uh, we are free of our own emotions so that we can be of help. Um, so freedom goes along with responsibility. You know, they have suggested that on the West Coast they should um, uh, put up a statue of responsibility because we already have the Statue of Liberty in the East Coast. I think that's very wise, yeah. Um, I think in uh, Oakland, in the East Coast, of California, they have the monuments. It's built, the foundation of the monuments is made of the railings of one of the tower, one of the two towers that fell in New York. And on top of that, the artist built this beautiful, it's all in black, black stones or something, uh, monuments. And they have all these figures of Mother Teresa, of Martin Luther King, of Thai, and uh, many people who help to make a better world. So um, I think that's the statue of responsibility. <laughs> um, when we can be a bodhisattva, when we can practice the five mindfulness trainings, or we practice the monastic and we get done our freedom. <laughs> and that way the world will have a better place. So they say the next Buddha is a Sangha. It's not one Buddha like Buddha Maitreya. We can be club of Maitreya's Buddha. <laughs> I think in Blue Club we have a Maitreya club. <laughs> Some brothers and sisters, they were teasing each other that they are in the Maitreya club. And I guess the club is composed of bodhisattvas who want to help oneself and also help other people. Um, so we have to raise collective awakening together. Um, so one person is not enough, one Buddha is not enough, one Thai is the situation. If you practice the mindfulness practice, if you are cultivating the four fruits of practice, and if you have achieved any one of those fruits, then you know you continue Thai in a beautiful way. So, um, that way we can heal the world. <laughs> oh, sorry, too quick. <laughs> so, um, I think Michael Jackson, he wrote the song, Heal the World, before he passed away. And uh, when I was in China recently to lead him for our Heal the World, I love this song very much, so I hope we can play it to for you today. And this song is sung by the children from all over the world.
make a